His 12th tackle of the night, two for a loss, his second. George Fant has taken back over a right tackle for the Texans. Pass is caught. Collins, first and goal. And a flag at the end of the play on the tackle. Tyquan Lewis with pressure. May have been a horse collar on the tackle at the end of it. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Defense number 48. Half an inch to the goal. Automatic third foul. That's Ronnie Harrison Jr. who had a sack earlier on this drive. Well, C.J. Stroud, I mean, this drive is, I, I don't want to say a defining drive, but it's been awfully good. He's got pressure. He hangs in there. He's not able to step in to throw again because Tyquan Lewis is right there. But he reads the coverage. He's got his eyes down the field. He puts the ball in a perfect spot. And there's the horse collar and a, a good call. Moves the ball inside the five, just outside the three, first and goal. Carry by Singletary for the touchdown. What a drive engineered by the rookie quarterback, C.J. Stroud. And a three-yard touchdown run for Devin Singletary, his fourth touchdown of the season. Well, and this is what Devil, Devin Singletary does. You're going to see that he's got this jump cut right there where he's avoiding the tight end, Eric Saubert. And he's able to then get into the crease. And you watch him. He did this at Buffalo all the time when you watch him play. And he's been doing it, you know, really the second half of the season for the Houston Texans as well. That was a great drive. Excellent work by C.J. Stroud. However, the extra point is yanked wide wow. left. And the first extra point missed on the year by Fairbairn. Just because I was talking about it going to break. Maybe the snap a little bit high by John Weeks. But Johnston got it down, and Fairbairn just hooked it wide left. His first miss on an extra point this season. And instead of a seven-point game, big six-point lead. Big. And how about that drive by C.J. Stroud? Seven for seven, 82 yards. And they overcome some you know bad situations with some big-time throws. Let's send it down to Lisa Salters. Yeah, Joe, well, while the Texans had the ball, Jonathan Taylor had been downgraded to doubtful to return, and the injury designation was changed from a heel injury to an ankle injury. But then he just came running down the tunnel with his helmet, and as you can see, back in the game. Yeah, and, and Troy, you and I were watching him on the sideline yeah. during the break which was, uh, it was fun to watch because he was psyching himself up. He was, yeah. He was nodding his head. He knows. He knows he's going to, he, it's going to ride on him. You know, Minshew's going to have to make some plays too. But this offensive line, and it's a big, big loss with Braden Smith out at right tackle as well. Blake Freeland has taken over at right tackle. Here he is and bottled up in the backfield is Taylor by Petrie. A loss of one, and before they headed out to work, Jonathan Taylor was on the sideline trying to fire himself up with the bad heel, the bad ankle, and a loss of one to start this drive. Under six to go. Backpedaling, passes caught by Downs, first down plus, still going. The rookie Downs is into Houston territory with a big play. Well, we've seen D'Amico Ryans, he's dialed up a few blitzes, and he brings Petrie again. He brings him here, but he's throwing the ball to this way, but it's man coverage, and so they get the ball to the guy who can make people miss, Josh Downs, and you, you don't make that tackle, and this is why the Texans have given up big plays. They've just not, they've, get, they've blown coverages, they haven't been able to make tackles at times this season. This time, Desmond King, who's in man coverage on Downs, not able to get him to the ground in a big game. Kareem Jackson missed a tackle on the play as well. Under five to go. Taylor back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Derek Barnett 
Former Philadelphia Eagle was in there and not alone on that stop. Second down. Well, as we know, the, the missed extra point is big. And I know what Shane Steichen wants to do. He wants to run Jonathan Taylor, and he wants to run the four-minute offense and take it down the field and milk the clock and score with very little time left and make their extra point. But, boy, Houston's not giving up much ground in the run game right now. Here's Downs again. Third down coming up as Downs is to the 44, a gain of four. Perryman made that tackle. Well, now you've got a third down, and it's hard to believe, but the Colts have yet to convert a third down in this game. And I, I just don't know that I've ever heard of a team winning a football game if they didn't convert a third down. The 2020 Giants, the last team to win a game going... Ofer on third down. Third down and six. And they hand it off. Taylor. And this is, well, there's a flag at the end of the play. And Taylor looked to be just short of first down yardage. Yeah, and you've got the center, Ryan Kelly, who looked like he got banged up pretty good on the play. Taylor hey, uses hands. Hands in the face. He's at the 96. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Five yard penalty for the end of the run. First down. It's against Malik Collins and a season high 11th penalty in the game on Houston. And a no doubter. Yeah, no. <laughs> a no doubter. I like that. Is that the vernacular you officials yeah, use? Yeah, when we Barry? write those up, we say a no doubter <laughs> prolonger. First down at the 34. Back to Taylor. Didn't look like there was any room in no. there. And somehow he ends up getting four. No, he's. I, I love the guy and what he's able to do. And I, I hate it for all running backs in our league that, you know, they've had to really kind of walk a hard line in trying to get paid. But Jonathan Taylor, if there is a guy, he's certainly the one that deserves it. But. You know, the clock continues to run, and D'Amico Ryan is going to have to start thinking about when he wants to start trying to stop the clock and using some of his timeouts. Each side with three left. Toss to Taylor. Third down coming up. A gain of just one. And what does Steichen come up with? On third down and five, a long five. So we saw Will Anderson Jr. go to the sideline. He's playing through a high ankle sprain. He's given his team all he can give. And now Denzel Perryman is down. They're a middle linebacker, and he needs assistance. Before third down and five. Well, that gives, that gives Shane Steichen a lot more time to think about this call. There's Perryman six in the middle of it with that right arm extended. And he uh, got the worst of it. Well, and the other part of this, too, is that, you know, they've got two downs to pick this up. They stick with Jonathan Taylor. Or... I mean, you think about all that goes into it, and you've been through it. Off-season training, training camp, season starts, injuries, trying to fill out a roster, trying to have a young team grow, and it comes down to two minutes and 41 seconds, and one of these two teams is going to the playoffs, and one of them is going to head home happy about the season but brokenhearted about tonight. Yeah, and, you know, you've said it, Joe. N neither of these teams could have imagined being in this position. It's a shame that someone is going to lose, but... They both have had great years, but the winner, boy, there's going to be a surge that carries them into the offseason no matter what happens once they get into the postseason. They do stick with Taylor, lowers his shoulder, and just wills his way near the first down, but he's short. Well, the official on the far side says he's about half a yard short. We're coming up on the two-minute warning. No, they gave it to him. Oh, they switched it. 
and and what's interesting is when the Colts thought it was short, they were getting right back onto the line of scrimmage. Once they saw that it was a first down, they were huddling back up. We were outside the two. We were outside the two-minute warning on the play. If this is going to be challenged, it would have to come from the Texans sideline. You see, the far official said he was short. The near official said first down, which is what it is with two minutes to go in a six-point game. Yeah, this is uh, as good as it gets. And John Perry, just to clean up, we had a discrepancy as to if it was a first down or not. It looked to you like they got the call right. Yeah, I like the first down. Really nice job mechanically getting together to get it right. So a first down for the Colts. As you'll see, Taylor just willed his way to the first down. And that was their first third down conversion of the game. What a time for it. One for ten. Here's a toss. Taylor, little stutter step. Out of bounds, forced out by Harris. Well, I, I, I know they... I understand they want to get the ball to Taylor and run the ball. I also know that... The Texans know that, and they've got opportunities on the outside. And I do like Alec Pierce at his size and his ability to make the tough catch. And you know who you can work against because these corners don't flip-flop. You know, they generally line up where they play. And right now, he's on Derek Stingley. You'd prefer for him, or excuse me, they got Pittman on, on Stingley right now. Hand off to Taylor, left side. Third down coming up with a minute 48 remaining, forced out by Cashman. This drive that started at the Indy 25 with 6.20 left. Well, it's nice when you've got second and long and, and you're able to get the ball and run it and pick up the game that they just did. Well, I don't see them getting away from that now. Pittman only two catches after halftime. Alec Pierce no catches all night. And there he is at the bottom. They stay with the run and fourth down comes up. Fourth and one. We'll, we'll see what Shane Steichen is, what his confidence level is right now of sticking with Jonathan Taylor or putting the ball in Gardner Minshew's hand. Yeah, that's interesting because they were so quick to get up there. That, you know, typically this is the game right here for Indianapolis. I mean, they've got to convert here. But, they, the, you know, you'd think there would be a timeout to think about this play, but there wasn't. So, yeah, not surprised then that they were just trying to see if they could draw them off sides and pick it up without having to call play. Gives us time to remind that the NFL playoffs kick off next Saturday with Super Wild Card Weekend presented by Verizon. 12 teams, six games, three days, one great weekend. The road to Super Bowl 58 starts here. Stay tuned after the Sunday games for the announcement of the full schedule. That's tomorrow late. We'll all know where everyone is headed. Tyler Goodson has checked in for the Colts. Taylor on the sideline on fourth and one, and here it is. It's in Minshew's hand, and a drop by Goodson. Texans make the stop, and they take over up by six. Not totally surprised by the call. The Colts throw the ball on fourth and one, second most in the NFL. So they put the ball in Minshew's hand. A good call. They've got an opportunity here. If Minshew just lays that a little bit more, a ball that could have been caught. But Goodson, he's trying to adjust, not able to secure it. Could have been a better opportunity. Boy, this is one that both Minshew and Goodson are going to be thinking about all night long. 
Texans take over. D'Amico Ryan's team makes the stop with an asterisk with that ball that hits the turf. They needed a yard, and Goodson and Minshew could not connect. Two timeouts left for the Colts, and a handoff is to Singletary, a gain of three. Time now for our game recap, which is brought to you by United Airlines, and it's that last drive by the Houston Texans. There's a sack here by Harrison. There were a couple times the Texans were backed up. And C.J. Stroud with this incredible throw to Nico Collins, a big piece of getting it into the end zone. And then that throw right there, you know, might have been his best throw of the night. But just an, an excellent job, a great drive. The ball to Nico Collins that he lays out. You know, like I said, even have the arm strength to get that in the vicinity of Nico Collins, and you see Gardner Minshew. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Second down and seven. Hand off to Singletary, and the Colts will use their last time out. Assess what we saw on fourth and one. This, this throw a little behind Goodson. Yeah, a little behind him. Goodson comes into the game with six receptions on the year. And so, you know, he hasn't had, you know, he hasn't had a lot of opportunities in these situations, of course. And just one that, you know, it can be caught, but you can also deliver a better ball as well. I think both of those players will take ownership on not being able to make the play. They called that timeout, remember, before the fourth and one after trying to draw, draw the Texans offside. So they're out of timeouts. It's third down and six in a six-point game. And the Colts cannot stop the clock again. Singletary, right side. It's fourth down. There'll be a little time left on the clock with less than 10 seconds. Yeah, you just look at this season and think back to a year ago. The Texans were in line for the number one overall pick, and they have the second pick. They take C.J. Stroud, and you've heard me say, Joe, that when you draft a rookie quarterback, you just hope that you come out of that first year that you know that he's your franchise quarterback and you feel good about him, and that's not always the case, but... I think the Texans knew pretty early on that they hit it on this guy right here. And in his biggest game of his short NFL career, he did everything that he had to do. He was 20 of 26, 260 yards, two touchdowns. But the biggest thing is he didn't turn the ball over. And as Jimmy Johnson has always said, when you're in a big game, it's not who makes the most big plays, although he made plenty. It's who makes the fewest bad plays. And... C.J. Stroud did not have a bad play tonight. See him with Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator, first year as an O.C. in the NFL. There's so many good things going on on both sidelines. Shane Steichen, this one will sting. Gardner Minshew had his team down the field riding... Jonathan Taylor, they took him out of the lineup on fourth down and one. Brought Goodson in and couldn't connect. The winner of this game is in the playoffs and has a shot with a Jacksonville loss at Tennessee tomorrow. They play at 1 o'clock Eastern. They would be the South champion in the AFC if Jacksonville loses that game. The loser of this game is out. Well, the Colts are selling out. There's nobody back to receive this punt. They're coming after it. They put a second back on the clock. Eight seconds left. Cameron Johnston is going to run out of the back of the end zone, take the safety, <laughs> make it a four-point game. Speed is there to force him out. He probably could have kept it at least a second, you know, run a little zigzag or something. I don't know. But now there's one second left, and we'll have the free kick.
Well, you can't say enough about the job that D'Amico Ryans has done, and, and really Shane Steichen as well. Uh, you know, you just hate it for whoever is going to lose this game, and it, unless some short of miracle, it's going to be the Indianapolis Colts. But great job by both these head coaches, both organizations. The owners got it right on who they hired, and just a really good season for everyone. Texans with a win tonight, and there's one second left. Go on top of the Jaguars would have the tiebreaker to win the division with a win tomorrow to also get to 10 and 7. And that number five seeded Cleveland Brown team is sitting there waiting for the winner of the South, and they are not going to be an easy team for whoever gets them in the wild card game a week from now. Well, the only chance, really, I mean, they they could field this and run around, or they could fair catch this if they get that opportunity. And then no time comes off the clock, and then they then they either way, it's going to be a helter skelter <laughs> ending to this ball game. Cameron Johnston. Has the ball in his hands, this free kick with one second left in what is now a four point game. All right, set and ready to go. Downs will bring it. Throws backward to Pittman. He fumbles it backward. Texans are there, and the Texans are in the playoffs. An emotional C.J. Stroud gets his young team into the postseason with a record of 10 and 7, and a win on the road here in Indianapolis in Week 18. Well, he was everything that he's been all season long. He has shown tremendous poise throughout the year and his command of the pocket in getting the ball to the right people, even shorthanded. Probably didn't stress that enough throughout this ball game without Tank Dell, without Robert Woods, without Noah Brown, and yet he delivered for this football team. And I think D'Amico Ryan said it to our Lisa Salters at halftime as good as you could, that he's the reason that they got to this point. He was the reason that they were able to win this game.